think it was perhaps revolutionary. At that time, people weren't used to seeing um, that sort of thing on their doorstep, as it were. The output was good, and, and the people who worked there, I thought, were very professional. I'm very proud, actually, to have had a tiny part in such a historic venture. These days there are loads of channels to choose from, but back in the 1970s in East Greenwich, TV reception wasn't great. Well that sparked local television in the form of Greenwich Cablevision, the first in the country. We got our television pictures from this weird idea of a piece of wire that went around 7,000 houses. It was the only way to get uh, decent television pictures at, at that time. Reception in East Greenwich was very poor. Shooter's Hill got in the way. So some very clever men put an aerial on a very tall building, got the signal from Crystal Palace to the tall building, and then down by cable and delivered to everybody else's houses. Greenwich Cable Vision began broadcasting from Plumstead High Street on the 3rd of July 1972. It cost 15 pence per week for the service, which included local broadcasting by Greenwich TV people. I think when you look back at Greenwich Cable Vision, I think undoubtedly you have to pay tribute to a man called Morris Townsend, who had the vision. Um, unfortunately, he was probably 30 years ahead of his time. To actually run local programmes, was, was a fantastic idea. The, the local TV channel was only on for a couple of hours a day. There was a, a show each evening, which was repeated the following morning, and the rest of the time there was just a clock going around. The, the Cablevision office at 307 Plumstead High Street um, had in its basement an office uh, for the TV station. There was a, a storeroom come workshop. There was a small control room and a studio where stuff was recorded. Um, the actual transmission facilities were on, on the Glendon Estates in, uh, in what were a couple of converted garages. The studio was very rudimentary, um, egg boxes over all the walls as the only sound um, insulation. With a, a little stage at one end, one camera, um, a window and then there was the control room on the other side. You're probably beginning to think, why haven't we shown you any footage? Unfortunately, most of the people we've spoken to have thrown it away. But if we did have it, what would it look like? It was very, very community-based. I mean, there was, there were, you know, lots of community news. They were about local issues. There was one that um, focused on local politics. There was one that focused on sort of local events, um, culture, entertainment. Suddenly, on the local television channel, you were seeing local councillors. Uh, the local MP would come on, and, and it, it did bring it very much into, into our lives. And as ever with these things, everybody has their own story or memory. I ended up at their studios in Plumstead, collected this camera. Unfortunately, no one ever told me how to use it. So when I got to the Bubble Theatre, there they were in mid-rehearsal, which I was supposed to be filming, and uh, I, got, I got sound, but I couldn't get any vision. In terms of you know, BBC and ITV programming at the time, it was probably quite substandard. Um, and it was black and white when, when there was colour. But I always got a feeling that people accepted that because, because of what it was and what it was trying to do. I was a little more successful the second time. And that was interviewing a local artist called George Sherlaw. But on the day that the programme was going to go out, we lost cable vision in our particular area. They arrived and we were, we were explaining that there was a bit of a problem in our area but we could go down to the studio and watch this programme and as luck would have it, at that very moment the signal came back on. I was the presenter, the first thing I'd ever presented in my life. Uh, this was rather stark and revealing black and white TV and um, I, was, I was shocked because I was looking at the screen and I remember saying out loud who the hell is that strange bloke who wandered onto the set? And it was me, of course. <laughs> 40 years on, we are still keeping alive the memories of those early Greenwich Cable Vision pioneers. We're now on the, 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 the branches, if you like, of, of those roots. 
Greenwich Cable Vision helped mould and create um, rather forgotten communities on the eastern side of the borough. Those cable systems were the multi-channel cable television systems of their time. Um, and maybe before their time. <laughs> <laughs>